Hey there, folks. I want to demo you a new crew that's super interesting because this one uses a custom tool. It uses the new crew format using the DSL and it uses some of the new features. So let me show you around. First thing that you're going to notice is that this crew has a whole structure now. It has config files, it has everything that you need, and you get that for free. All you got to do is do a crew AI create comment and you add the name of our crew. In this case, I'm just going to type it out to Lauren so that you can see what comes out of it. And what this comment does is create this initial folder structure for you with everything that you need, including a readme file with instructions on how to install the dependencies, how to lock them, how to handle environment variables, and even how to execute a project. So you'll get all that for free in there. Let's go back to our example so that we can check it out. Uh, in this one, you're going to see that agents and tasks are now YAML files. And the idea here is to make it sure that it's simpler for people to contribute to this. So these are easier to version, easy for people to comment, and even people that are not coders to actually play around with that. And for our example, we have a researcher, a matcher, a communicator, and a reporter. The idea is that these four agents are going to find candidates for a job position. They're going to figure out how we want to talk to these people. They're going to score them and give us a complete report of who we should be talking to. If we look at the tasks, they're going to be first researching candidates. So they're going to be going online, going into LinkedIn, researching people, finding their profiles. Then they're going to try to score and match these people with the job posting that we have. Then they're going to come up with an outreach strategy, like what sort of emails should we be sending or messages and anything. And they're going to put together a final report. So this is a very interesting use case because it's very common when people try to do outreach to find people to join their companies. So for us, we are going to be working with this basically dumb job requirement where it basically has a Ruby on Rails and React engineer job posting. It has a simple descriptions, some high level responsibilities, some high level requirements, qualifications and perks. So this is basically what a, a job posting would be and what we're searching for, right? So now all I got to do to run my crew is run this single command, poetry run recruitment. That's the name of our crew. So let's do that real quick. All right, so you're going to see that as our first agent kicks off, it's going to start searching LinkedIn. So it's actually open up LinkedIn here. It's logging in, searching for people like that knows Ruby, that knows React, finding that people pulling like some information from their profile. And then the second agent is going to kick off. That is going to start to score those people against the job requirements that we have. So that's going to be pretty cool. Bear with me for a second. Let's see how this wraps up. All right, so this is pretty cool because we didn't give any instructions on how this agent should reach out to these engineers. It's basically trying to understand what are the best practices to reach out to software engineers. So it was able to understand that this is a job engineering job posting. And now it's trying to understand, is there like a specific technique or specific words? And it's finding some articles and now trying to read them in order to better understand how it should reach out and basically write these messages. And that's pretty cool. And you can see that there's some high level strategies in here being personalized, basically have initial contact methods, think about the content and the outreach message, avoid some of the common pitfalls and have follow-ups. So it's just starting to understand the strategy and how to reach out to the people. All right, and there we have it. We have the final response from our crew. We have a detailed report on the best candidates. So in here, we have the candidates and we also have a score. So we can see the ones that are a great match and the ones that are not so great match. We also see some information about their location, their skills, a justification about it, and even links to their LinkedIn profile. So, so that's pretty useful. And then if you scroll down, you also see how to outreach for these candidates. There's a high level like uh, ideas in here. And then you have the actual templates. So you have the template for the initial email, exciting opportunity for a Ruben Rails React engineer at Company X. And then there's some information in here on how you could go about it. There's another template for a LinkedIn message, another template for a follow-up email. So it's pretty straightforward. But let's say that we want to add an extra touch, right? We want to teach these agents to do better at this. And we want to teach them to basically do how we would like to do it. And that's how I want to demo a new feature for you. All right, so this new feature is the Crew AI Train feature. It basically allows you to do reinforcement learning with human feedback without having to think too much. All you're going to do is go into your terminal and do Crew AI Train, and then you can set how many times you want to train this. We can start with a very low number. Sometimes one, two, or three are more than enough to reinforce the learning on how your agent should behave. So for this one, let's do just one. All right, so you can see that now we're training our crew for one iteration. And what's going to happen is our crew is going to execute as usual. But the main difference is that once that it's finished its execution, it's going to stop every task along the way and ask us for feedback. And we can give it any feedback that we want. 
that it might want a different format, that it might want a different language, and your agents are going to learn from all that feedback along the way. So in here, you can see that our agent just finished its first task. It found all these different profiles, and it's asking for feedback. I really like the fact that it found these profiles, so I don't have much feedback in here. I would just say this is great work, a great number of profiles to start with. Now it's going to go to the second task, and I might have more feedback on that one. All right, so our second agent just finished it, and this agent is supposed to score the candidates. And you can see that it did a very good job on scoring them, but let's say that I have some feedback in here. It's giving like a very high score on proximity, depending on where these people are. And you can see that people that are further away, for example, if someone's in Paraguay, it get a score zero. But let's say that I'm a remote first company, so I don't really care where people are located. So I can basically tell my agent that I don't really mind if people are from other countries or not too close from St. Howell. So let's never score them based on that. So now I'm just teaching my agents in the same way that you would onboard new people into a job. Why you really care? And then what are your actual internal processes and how you think about some of these things? And if you do this right, they're going to learn from this. And from this point on, for every execution of this crew, it's always going to remember what you trained it on first. All right. Now these agents asked me about feedback on the templates. So I want to say that I want a more funny ones. So let's say templates should be light and funny. I also include a bunch of emojis <laughs> just to make sure that we get that like extra fun in there. And you're going to see in the end, after we train this crew, when we rerun it multiple times, that's going to always follow those rules. So we won't get anything similar to what we get in the first time, but now we're going to get consistent results every time following exactly some of the feedback that we were able to provide. So let's keep it going. All right, and this is the final agent. This is the agent that puts the report together. And here we can see the whole answer. We can see the uh, people, we can see the templates, everything is in here. One piece of feedback though, is that you didn't use the hashtags for making like title and subtitles because it's formatting, it's formatting this as Markdown. So let me give that feedback. Um, when formatting this Markdown, make sure titles and subtitles are included and in that you are using hashtags in order to take them. All right, this is it. Now we have trained our crew once and we can run it again and see what we're gonna get and how widely different that will be from what we just got here. All right, so now we're gonna run the same crew again, but it's gonna have learned from our feedback and for our training. One thing that you're gonna notice is that in your folder, now there's gonna be this new training data PICO file and this training agents data PICO file. That's where your training data lives. If you ever wanna clean this up, you can just delete those files and you're good to go. And if you're deploying this on Create AI Plus, you can just version this into a GitHub repository and everything's gonna be taken care of. So now let's actually run this crew again and see what results do we get out of it? All right, so I just run this crew again and look how funny this is. And now when it's doing the scoring for the candidates, it doesn't even mention the candidate's location. It just gives a score. So it's completely ignoring location and just giving a score to these people just based on if they're a good match or not, as we told it to you. So this feels great already. Uh, let's look at what the final result looks like. All right, so here you can see the templates. And as we told it, it added a bunch of emojis. So we have emojis in the subjects, emojis across the email, and it tried to make it a little more funny and like less AI sounding. So this also checks out. And now for the final result, you can see that it's using hashtags to define everything. It's doing the titles, subtitles, sub subtitles. So that's looking like exactly what we wanted. So you can see on how I was training this crew just once and doing enforcement learning with human feedback has a huge impact. And the good thing is that now for every time that we run this crew, it's always going to follow those initial suggestions and those initial feedbacks. And the more we train it, the more constrained it will be to the way that we teach it on how we want it to perform. Or that way, we're going to get consistent results all the time. Hey, I hope you like this one. I tried to keep it short, but I'll keep it coming. Have a good one and I'll catch you online. Bye-bye.